Okay, everybody, so it's just about one o'clock and we're going to get started. Uh, this is track two. If you're looking for track one, I'll post a link later on in the chat after this introduction. So my name is Gina. I'm going to be moderating this room uh, just to remind you that it is recorded. Uh, so anything that appears on screen here, uh, such as the presentations, will be recorded for your viewing afterwards. And we'd like to thank our sponsors first. So we'd like to thank the Evergreen Community Development Initiative for sponsoring the platform of Hopin to make this digital conference possible. So thank you so much for that. And also for Mobius for uh, being the sponsor of our captioning. So there is captioning in this track and I have posted a link a little bit earlier, but I will throughout the presentation. And if you have any questions for our presenter, Jane, uh, thank you so much for putting together this presentation for us, uh, building our collage, how Evergreen's documentation works. So if you have any questions for her, just pop them in the chat and I'll make sure that she will receive them. And if you have any general questions, you can go over to the event uh, portion of your chat or you can even ask me if you need any further help. So uh, I think that's everything. And whenever you're ready, Jane, you can go ahead and get started. Hey, thank you so much, Gina. Thanks for the great introduction and then all the work you've been doing behind the scenes to make this happen. I'm gonna go ahead and try to share my screen. There's like the endless windows. <laughs> um, and let me see if I can get this into presenting mode. All right. Is that screen showing up for everyone? Now I realize that I can't see the chat. <laughs> yeah, the screen is coming up for us. Oh, great. Well, thanks everyone for being here. Thanks for watching me figure out the platform. Um, this talk is called Building Our Collage. Um, and the reason I'm talking about collages is because I think it's a good way to think about the documentation that Evergreen has. So over 100 people have contributed to Evergreen's documentation over the years. There are bits and pieces taken from other existing documentation as well as new documentation kind of woven together. Um, and so all those different pieces come together to form this magnificent whole. Um, so I got really excited about this collage idea and I each of these slides does have a collage on it. Um, those are openly licensed collages that I found on Flickr. Um, in the top right hand corner of each slide, it gives you some of the metadata um, and the licensing information about the, the collage that you see in the background. Um, so for example, this one, this collage that you see is called Today's Progress on Circle by John Lemazny, and it's um, licensed under that Creative Commons uh, attribution share alike license. Um, there, this, these slides are also like very busy. Um, there's a lot going on. And if you prefer something simpler, I've also got um, an alternate format, um, which is available at https colon slash slash tinyurl.com slash evergreen collage. And I'll just show you what that looks like. Um, so each slide has its own second level heading so you can keep track of the, the different slides that way. And then it just has a series of bullet points um, giving the information that's on the slide. And the first bullet point is always that information about the collage um, so that you can go enjoy it on your own terms. I'm going to quickly put that link into the chat while I'm here. And then go back to the slides. So I'm moving on to the slide called session plan. Um, and so here's what we're going to be doing for the next 40, 45 minutes. So for this pre presentation, I was asked to walk through the entire process from start to finish of what it takes to improve a piece of documentation for Evergreen or add to a piece of documentation. And the first thing that sprang into my mind was like, okay, so I'm thinking about Schoolhouse Rocks 
and how they have that cute video where the bill becomes the law. And so what if I wrote like my own Schoolhouse Rocks that's for the evergreen documentation. It takes this like little idea in someone's head and then it becomes a beautiful evergreen manual. It will be so catchy. It will be stuck in everyone's head. I'll finally like put that music degree to use. Um, and that never happened. So instead, <laughs> what we'll be doing is um, looking at the human processes that go in to making Evergreen's manual step by step. Um, and I'm really wanting to focus on what we as people do to contribute to Evergreen's documentation. There's there are other there's other information um, about how like the machines help us out, like how to use Antora, how to contribute through GitHub, all that and that that type of information is important as well. But I, I today I wanted to focus on what we as people do. Um, I'll be sure to point out ways that you can get involved in contributing. Uh, contributing to these processes, contributing content of your own to the Evergreen documentation, um, as well as how you can contribute to improving the processes that we have um, to build these documentation, this documentation. Um, then we'll also take a look at the Evergreen document. Official manual. Um, and we'll, we'll explore some of the other documentation that's within the, the Evergreen ecosystem. Uh, this is going to be an interactive session. I want to let you all know. Um, we will be actually do, uh, doing some of these processes ourselves. A lot of times that will be within the chat window. So uh, prepare yourselves for that. Um, get, make sure you're, you're familiar with the chat window and ready to, to participate. And then I'm also just going to take 10 seconds at the end of talking on each slide so that we can all just enjoy the collage together. I'll do that now. All right, so this slide's called Four Types of Documentation. Um, today, I divided Evergreen's documentation into four different types. First of all is the official Evergreen manual, which is where we'll be spending most of our time today. The second I wanted to really look at is contextual help. The third is going to be release notes. And then the fourth is going to be documentation that's not for the end users of Evergreen, but for the developers instead. I'm just going to open up the Evergreen manual so that we all have a good visual of what that looks like. And I'm also going to throw the link into the chat. So in broad strokes, there are four steps to adding some new information or revising some existing information in the manual. Step one is that uh, a contributor will identify and figure out that there is a gap within the documentation and go ahead and report that. Secondly, it could be the same contributor or another contributor. Um, will actually create the documentation or compile it from some other sources, um, get it all prepared to, to, to be included into the documentation. The third step is that the contributors will submit that documentation for review. And then the fourth step is that the documentation committers will review that, that documentation and then go ahead and incorporate the submissions that are ready. So now I'm on the slide called step one, contributors identify and report a gap. So we'll look a little bit more in depth into that process. Um, especially about reporting a gap. So one place that those can be reported are is on the official Evergreen Wiki. So there's this growing list 
of evergreen documentation needs. Um, oftentimes when there's a new release, we'll put in the new features and say like this feature came in, but we don't have enough documentation in the manual for it. Another place that those gaps can be reported is on Launchpad, which is the Evergreen's official bug tracker. Um, and we tend to group those together with this tag just called documentation. And I'm going to open up here and show you some of those documentation gaps that have been identified as well. And both of those are things that require a login, require some familiarity with the system um, and how we have it set up to actually report those gaps. And I think one potential process improvement is to figure out a lower barrier way for folks to report gaps um, as, they're, as they're using the evergreen documentation and make sure that that's publicized pretty widely so that folks um, folks without those logins and without that experience can just say, hey, you need a, a chapter on this. All right, so we're up to our first activity, which has to do with, um, with identifying and reporting those gaps. So we're going to divide it into teams for this activity. Um, so if you are familiar with either Launchpad or the Evergreen Wiki, if you already have a login there, you're automatically on team two. If you don't have those things or you don't happen to remember your password, you're going to be on team one. So um, what team one will be doing, it's going to be kind of like a relay race with team one working first. So team one will just think back on something that's confused you or some of your colleagues or other people you've talked to about Evergreen, something that just has been a point of, yeah, I don't quite understand that. Then go ahead and search in the manual to see if it's covered in the manual or not. Um, and once you have found something that is not covered, that has been a point of confusion that is not covered in the gap, um, just go ahead to the chat and put in that, um, that um, gap that you've identified. And then sit back, your work is done, you can enjoy this collage. Um, team two, um, what you'll start out with is, is just sitting back and enjoying the collage. And then um, once team one has started putting some of those gaps into the chat, um, what I'd like you to do is just write a chat message to claim that that um, gap so that other folks know that you're working on it. Um, and then make sure that make sure to get that gap into Wiki or into Launchpad. Um, are there any questions about this activity? Um, and Gina, actually, could you check the chat for to let me know if there are any questions, please? No problem. No, nothing just yet, but I will chime in if someone does. Sounds good. Um, all right, so I think we can get started. Um, team one, take it away. The oh. other question just to clarify the teams again. Oh, yes. So team one is if you don't have a uh, login to the wiki or to Launchpad, or if you're not feeling very familiar with those platforms. And then team two are folks who do have access, are feeling confident about those platforms. And I should also say, let's take about seven or eight minutes to, to do this project. Question about, is it all right to observe? Yeah, it is all right to observe, um, but just, uh, but I'd encourage you to, even if you don't want to be doing the chat interaction piece, um, I'd encourage you to follow along on some of those steps if you're if you're able.
I know I said to endure the collage, but I'm going to stop sharing for a moment and, and so that I can hop into the chat as well. we have one so far. Um, this question comes from not being familiar with staff account management Evergreen. I can find password reset instructions for patrons wanting to reset their passwords for staff accounts. Can staff reset their own passwords or is that ability restricted to admins? I'm not sure from the docs which one is expected behavior. That's a fantastic question. Does anyone on team one want to go ahead and claim that that gap? I know I run into that all the time. <laughs> the lack of clarity there. Oh, thanks, Jennifer. All right, we have one from uh, Donna. I have been told that patrons can turn on circulation tracking on their side of the platform. 
I can't find the documentation that describes how. Um, just to clarify, is that in the open catalog? Okay, so circulation history on their accounts. Oh, Jamie, that's a great question about how do you search the manual. Um, let me share the share the manual in my screen, and we can see we can look at that together because that will be pretty useful for for this whole process. So once you're in the manual, you can go up to this right hand corner, and it says search docs, and then you can go search for. say funds and then it will give you a list of results that will pop up here and then you can click into them to get to the get to the part of the manual and see make sure that that what you're looking for is or isn't covered and i think we'll wrap it up in about three minutes so if you're on team one, be sure to put your things in the chat, your, your gaps that you've found. Um, and team two, um, just keep watching that chat and listening to Gina and making sure that you're, you're grabbing your, those opportunities to, to record those gaps that they've found. Well, if you could, oh, never mind. Someone, uh, I think, put in the, <laughs> the link for the document in there for the manual, so. Thank you. Um, and Lynn took another one that was in regards to um, an incorrect image or film that was a remake of another, but it's also hard to report which one was the original, if it was for the earlier film or the remake. So thank you, Lynn, for doing that. Right, a one minute warning. In about one minute, we'll get back to the slides. Okay, we got one from Allison. Uh, exporting templates, it's not clear that when you export, you are exporting all print templates in one file, and uh, there's a link to that. Right. I'm going to start moving us forward, but if you're, feel free to wrap up or continue um, to continue um, your work on Team One or Team Two in the background. Moving on to the slide called Step Two: Contributors Create or Compile Documentation. And so this documentation it can be sourced from local documentation. Um, the uh, BC Libraries Cooperative is like one example that jumps right to mind um, as a place that has some wonderful, fantastic um, documentation that has made its way into the Evergreen Manual itself. 
Um, it can be coming from release notes that are included with each new evergreen release. Sometimes those release notes go really in depth and actually do provide um, all the information that a system administrator or a or a end user might need to know about a particular feature. Um, sometimes it's just coming from different emails that folks have sent around the community or discussions people have had on Launchpad or on the IRC chat that, that the developers um, are often found on. Um, and then it could be just brand new documentation. And I, th I think there are some process improvements um, on this on this side as well, especially when we're talking about bringing in documentation from other sources. Um, my college has been working a lot with open textbooks, openly licensed materials that are used in the classroom. We've had um, faculty members who, with their students, um, write a textbook themselves, pulling in chapters from other um, related textbooks that are also under open licenses, making those available to the wider community um, uh, so that other schools and other faculty members can take the chapters that they need, put that into a custom textbook for their students. And of course, since it's all under these open licenses, it's all free, it's reducing those textbook costs. It's like really amazing projects. And I think we as the, the documentation group of Evergreen have a lot to learn from them because they're really using those open licenses um, to, to their full advantage. And so I think it would be helpful to, to streamline the process um, and have like some good written out procedures about how to incorporate other chapters, other um, information from other sources into the Evergreen documentation itself, into the Evergreen manual. But then also make it easier for others to take those kind of chapters for their own local institution. Um, so if your library doesn't use acquisitions, let's make you a version of the documentation that just doesn't have the acquisitions chapters in it. If your library uses a particular setting, let's like make sure your documentation reflects that setting and doesn't confuse you with all this information about like, if you have this setting, then do this. If you have that setting, then do that. So I would really love to see a documentation that you can just take and make it suited to your, your local circumstances. So we moved on to the slide activity two. Um, this will be a lot shorter and <laughs> thank goodness we don't have the teams for this one. Everybody is going to be just doing this on the by their um, on their own own everyone's going to be just doing this by themselves. So please just open up a new tab find some evergreen documentation online from somewhere other than the official manual. Um, try to track down the license information if there is some available for that documentation. And then just throw a link into the chat with a link to that documentation um, and any information that you are able to find out about its license. Any questions about this activity? All right, let's take maybe three or four minutes to do this one. This is great. I'm seeing the Pines documentation, Evergreen Indiana documentation, Bibliomation, NC Cardinal. Oh, this is great. They're really starting to come in now.
Oh, this is great to see those Creative Commons licensed um, manuals out there. So I've moved on to the next slide, step three, um, where contributors actually submit the documentation that they've either created or compiled. Um, and there are various ways to do this. The simplest and low barrier way is to just take that, that um, documentation that you've prepared and just send it to the evergreen documentation email list. Um, the, there is like a more involved process as well, which is where you actually use the ASCII doc um, markup language and then put it into GitHub as a pull request. And what that allows is it allows the community to like really easily um, bring that into the manual using all of our current technologies and current processes. So there's a low barrier way and then there's a, a more advanced way. And the more advanced way, the procedures for doing that are available within the manual itself as of last week. Um, so thanks so much to Blake and Lynn, I think, for writing those. And there is an activity associated with this step as well. Um, so this is an optional activity. Um, what I'd like, what the activity is, is to choose one of the following two things to do either sign up for the evergreen documentation email list, which is where you would email your documentation that you'd like to add, or to create your own GitHub account and create a fork of evergreen, which is the first step in that more advanced process. So this is optional, like not everybody is very interested in, in like getting more emails. Not everybody is interested in getting another account. Um, I totally respect that. However, um, it, I would encourage you to do one of these two if you haven't already. I'm putting into the chat the link to get onto the email list. And now I'm going to put into chat the link to get to Evergreen on GitHub where you can go ahead and click the fork button set up an account if you need to, and then have your own, your own version of Evergreen. And just take two minutes to, to participate in this activity if you're, if you're interested in doing so. Oh, and I see this question from Nicole. Nicole is asking, I'm sorry, but what is GitHub? And GitHub is where we keep, it's one of the places where we keep the code for Evergreen. And then it provides a place for us to house the code, but then also to have all sorts of communications about the code. So, so we can include pull requests, which are basically requests to like say, change this piece of code. Um, so it's, both the code housing and then also the communication piece. And the documentation is kind of mixed in there with the code as well. All right, I'm going to move on to step four which is where the documentation committers review and incorporate submissions. So the documentation committers are the folks who, who actually have the power to bring new additions into the, into the Evergreen manual. There are only two of us right now. Um, it's myself and Andrea Bunce-Nyman. 
Um, so one of the process improvements that I would love to see is to have a bigger team who's able to do that. Um, so we don't Another process improvement that I've been really interested in is you, GitHub has these features where you can automatically generate a preview version of the documentation with your own changes whenever somebody proposes a new pull request. Um, so that way, um, both the person who both the contributor and the committer are looking at the same um, same output. We can see if there are any issues, if like a chapter failed to, to load, and we can we can work on that together from the, from the same reference point. And and that's all I'll say about that, because I'm interested in hearing you have so far about the evergreen manual Not seeing any questions right now. So I want to move on to another piece of documentation that's outside the manual, and that's contextual help. So this is some documentation that is within Evergreen itself and within Evergreen screens. Um, so that when you just have like a small question about like, oh, how do I format this field? Or what does it mean when I press this button? Rather than having to go out remember the manual, remember how to get there, remember how to find that particular piece in the manual. Instead, the help is right there. Um, and one tool that the developers have at their disposal to be able to do that within the staff client is this component called EG Help Popover. And I'm going to go into Evergreen itself and show you an example of what that looks like. So here we are in the booking module and we're wanting to make a meeting room reservation. Let's create that reservation. And you can see here reservation location. What does that mean? what you can do is click on this little question mark icon, and then it will give you a little definition of what that field actually means. So this is our last activity for today, um, which is, um, so the, the, there's this EG help popover which gets some, which is used in some screens, but a lot of screens could really use it, um, but don't have one of those popovers available with that, that nice um, inline documentation. So what I'd like to do is I'll just go into Evergreen um, and then I'll watch the chat to see which screens people want to look for. And then let's work together to find one of those screens that could really benefit from from some contextual help in, an, in one of those little help popovers. Um, and let's try to, to collaborate on some of the wording and the placement of where we want it to be. Um, and then if we have some time, we can actually get that typed up and put it on Launchpad so that, so that our, our, our help popover can actually be in Evergreen. So are, are there any, so what, what are some screens in the, in the staff client that we think could use, use a tool like that? I'll watch the chat. Pending patrons. This is one I don't know very much about.
And Kathleen, where would you want, uh, where's one point of confusion on the screen where you would want uh, a popover? Oh, and Melissa, that's a good one in the reports module as well. Since that's an older interface, I it doesn't. I don't think this has the possibility of getting the help pop over. Um, it's just in those newer Angular and Angular JS interfaces that you can do it. Oh gosh. <laughs> Oh, that's a good tip. Yeah. Oh, Meredith, that's a good one as well. Oh yeah, and save and clone. Yeah, that would be a fantastic place for just a, yeah, what does save and clone even mean? And check out your patron credit for bills. Definitely a very good suggestion. Yeah, I don't know what that means. <laughs> So check out bills. And is it this checkbox here? Convert to checkbox and then that'll be the credit that will go on to that account. So it could be used, I think, for other transactions. I wrote up some documentation for that just for our own purposes um, somewhere because it's a <laughs> It's kind of like an involved process. It's not so obvious to staff. So I definitely agree with that one. Got it. Um, can we just choose that one and figure out like some brief wording that would be helpful um, to someone who's just like, oh gosh, I am just so fuzzy on what convert um, to patron credit even means. I just need a refresher. for strict barcode. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, Allison and April just chimed in at the same time with some great wording. So actually, Allison and April, with your permission, um, after this, um, after this session, I'll just go into Launchpad and, and open up a bug to get, get one of those help popovers with a combination of your wording. And it seems like we have lots of great ideas about other screens. So maybe throughout the conference, we can be adding to, to Launchpad about here's another screen where we should, we should have one of those help popovers. Right. Uh, another process that goes into the documentation is the release notes. And so for new features, um, developers or the development team will provide those along with the code um, when they when they submit some code for, for approval in future versions of Evergreen. Um, and then for those bug fix releases, the point releases, um, it's the release team who is going to go ahead and create brief notes about each of those little bugs that would, that got fixed. Little bugs. Some of them are big bugs. Each bug that gets fixed. 
And then the developers also have great needs for documentation. Um, so they both need like that um, large scale um, conceptual information about how the system is set up and how it works together. But then also those like just in time kind of reference documentation um, as well. And there's been some really incredible effort over the years um, to make the developer documentation um, meet developer needs as well. So I really want to give a shout out to Dan Wells, Remington Steed um, for their long standing efforts in that area. And then also Taryn McKenna and the new developers group have been doing so much to make the developer facing documentation accessible and understandable at, um, to folks at, who are just starting out as evergreen developers. So those are really incredible efforts. Hey, that's all I've got to talk to you about today. Um, we've got three minutes left. Um, any questions or any other discussion topics that you'd like to, to bring forward? Really wants a <laughs> further explanation on strict barcode. It's definitely a good suggestion. <laughs> I turned it on by mistake the other day and it was it was bad news. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh. We've got a question which I am not really the best person to answer. What does strict barcode mean? Does somebody want to take a stab at that? Thanks, Blake and Lynn and Jennifer and Diane. All right. Hey, thank you so much for, to everybody for joining me and for in, embarking in the, the interactive pieces. I, I really appreciated your energy and your, your thoughts about where we can improve the documentation and looking forward to more conversations throughout the conference.